tonight we've had a wonderful, well, over the weekend we've got a wonderful lineup of guests, but this particular couple of guests, they can be a little bit nervous. So when I found out about this gig just a couple of weeks ago, I did have to go and do a nervous poo. Um, so I'll be honest with you, I'm just, I'm just telling it like it is. It, it, it's because these are titans of, of the sport. Uh, and of course, it's uh, Tom Bonin and, and Fabian Cancellara. Um, <laughs> see, did you notice my intonation went down because I knew you'd do the rest? Uh, so we're going to, before we bring the, these two fine gentlemen on stage to, to look back on their career, um, let's have a look. Um, in alphabetical order, this isn't favoured at all. So Tom Bonin, surname with a B, Cancellara a C. So alphabetical order, first up, some Tom Bonin best bits. And next, well, it's a gentleman on your screen, the uh, devilishly handsome, handsome Fabian Cancellara. There we go. So let's bring them on stage. Tom Bonin and Fabian Cancellara. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. I'm, I'm kind of like the red. I mean, I'm, I'm fan, fanboy. I'm fanboying out now. This is, this is really incredible. Same for me. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> Checks in the post. We love how we do the races now. Thanks, man. That's very kind. So, thank you very much. Tom Bonin and Fabian Cancellara. That, that, that will do. That's, that's it. Uh, no, when I first heard that you guys uh, were going to be coming to Ruler Live, um, and I was asked to do it, I was just saying, I was, I was quite nervous. Um, so, in alphabetical order, what I want to do first, because I don't want to separate, we're going to be comparing you guys, but obviously... What you achieved in your respective careers was, was incredible. There was an incredible period of racing, especially in the classics. A defining era that will constantly be looked back on and referred to. As a, and and you, you hold a place because of your achievements um, amongst the greats, the, the, the legends of our sport. Um, there's no doubting that. And to have you both together, and, and I know that you've, apart from for a couple of moments in Leuven at, at the World Championships in 2019, you've never actually spoken. So... No. So, so Tom, with your name finished, finishing with Bonin yeah. with a B, and it's just alphabetical. There's no preference. So, so, Tom, if you could speak first, because this could be really a really competitive chat. But Tom, so, so why is that? I mean, do um, do do riders? I mean, just I guess you've got completely different outlooks in life. You just I, float away and did different things. So it's the, it's the same with uh, with almost um, all of my ex colleagues um, from different countries. You see them once in a while, like. When you go to a world championship, for example, I saw people, I saw Fabian there and some, some other ex-colleagues. But um, yeah, you stop cycling or you stop racing bikes competitively and then uh, your life uh, just goes on and their life goes on and they have families and they have friends and they have hobbies and they have different pro professions. And so it's not like you're on the phone, even when we were still riders. I mean, I don't think we ever spoke on the phone, maybe one time or two times. And, I can't remember, but so, yeah, it's uh, your rivals, I mean, your opponents in the same races, so you're trying to beat each other, so you become rivals, but um, it's not like we had a big, big, big contact before. And what, what about, from your perspective, and that's a really insightful perspective, but Fabian, what about for you? Uh, explain, explain that dynamic, because it's, um, you're clearly more than comfortable in each other's company now, but you were great. Not, not you were, you are great champions, you know, but, uh, but there was an intense rivalry, very, very intense rivalry um, during, your, during your respective careers. So how do you feel now sitting here it's with Tom? Cool. I think <laughs> it's cool, honestly. It's, uh, it's special because we have seen in, after your retirement, my retirement twice probably, yeah, or just in occasions. But like he said, you stop 
you retire, and then you go out, you go home. I mean, you go where you are. And it's not anymore cycling. Everyone does his own thing. Everyone has to find his path. And, and one takes a bit more on the time on it. And if you stay in still as a trainer, DS, whatever, then you're still in and then you see these people. But I think on the end, we, we both went out of the cycling world. We did our things. And, but on, on the end, um, and I know Tom since 1998 in Austria. So uh, we, we raced long years together, but yeah. on, on the other hand, we've been also rivals. And what I'm proud of is that, I mean, he made me a better rider as well. Because it's not, we have seen, of course, we have seen in the, in the hotels or, on, on, or at the start, but it's not, I mean, to say friends, or we have been colleagues, we have been respecting each other, and, and, and today when we talked about it, it's not about, hey, this and that, it's about, hey, I bring my daughter in the morning to school, and I do this, yeah. hey, I do the same. And so today we talk about life, yeah. normal stuff, and I think today is much different. Then he was racing Quickstep, I was racing in those teams I have been. And of course, uh, the outside, ah, they, 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 they do these trash things and media and this, but on the end, we are bike riders and we loved what we did. And this is riding those races. And, and that's the thing that um, you, you not only rode the races and achieved what you did, it, were you actually, Tom, were you conscious of entertaining people, the general public, because you were heroes in your respective countries? Yeah, but, uh, were you, did, what was foremost? Was it entertaining and winning? Was it winning and entertaining? Because uh, you cr the, the memories that you've created, the, the young riders that have aspired to be like both of you, uh, who looked to you for the way you, uh, the way you raced, um, how, what did you set out to do? Was it just winning and that was it? Or was there a style to I the winning, like a, like a Flandre? For example? The, the start, and I just want to come back to this one more time. I think we, we, we raced to, against each other as opponents maybe five times a year. Yep. But we did maybe 50 races a year together. So the other 45 years we were in the back or <laughs> dropped in the gruppetto <laughs> or talking shit to each other or sharing food to other people because we were sick of the boss we were having. And so I mean, the four or five races where you focus on a year where you're racing each other hard, like, you know, okay, I love it when my opponents are in shape. The, the years that I wasn't in shape or Fabian wasn't in shape, it's not the same thing. Yeah. So, the better the rivalry, the, the more fun the race becomes. It's, yeah. it's more fun to beat good people than to beat bad people. Yeah. So that's one thing. And also I think um, I never set out to do um, races or win races, to not, not when I was a rider, to motivate people to start riding their bikes. It was a collateral damage, let's say. It, it just happened. Yeah, no, yeah. You just, you're so focused on doing well and, and doing 100% to that one-day race and then three days later there's another one-day race. So you're preparing the complete spectrum and you're trying to win all of them but you're not thinking about um yeah being on stage and looking good and trying to get young people to ride the bike it becomes it comes later yeah after 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 Roubaix, you know you have time to reflect a little bit for a week or two and then it comes later but to stay in that focus for the, those three four weeks super important and, and in, in my in my life when i was there and i was in shape for three four weeks from san remo to Roubaix, nothing else existed nothing yeah, just that. <laughs> Good. And, and Fabian, from I'll ask you both this question: When you were for those four or five races, bitter rivals, I and mean, it wasn't just you, but you were the two riders at the pinnacle who won in, in an incredible amount of races between you, and often you were first and second in the same races. Did was it? Did it get to the point in a team meeting, Fabian, with with a director when you knew you were up against Tom, and, and obviously the rest of the field? Did you? Did you talk about beating him in a way to beat Tom? And I'll ask you the same question in a minute. Or was it more of a general plan? Or did you, because of how fierce the rivalry was, was there a particular tactic to try and get rid of Tom, for example, in, in Flanders and Roubaix in particular? Yeah, I think, um, of course, a tactic. First of all, you look to your team and your strengths you have, and then you put the tactic for the team. But, of course, you, Tom and, and the team was always an important uh, talk in our meetings because we always knew they had a strong lineup and we knew that the sports director and they always if Tom was in high in super shape or you know even not in the shape we always looked at Tom because we knew that he has an, an, um, he has how called um, 
I don't say it's about miracle, but we always knew that when Tom has it, even a day that will come, he can also perform. We know that. Yeah. So it's not dropping Tom, but we need to calculate. But only to look at him or to the team was also wrong. So there's other teams as well, because on the end, it's a bike race. Yeah. You put tactics out and you have to race for the favor that you not get in defensive or that your team get destroyed. That this happened as well one year that our team was in the middle of the race, there was no one else around, just myself, because they raced smart, they raced good. And, and I think this is, I think on the end, when you see, I mean, it was me and Tom and Stein de Volder. We have been, I don't know in how many years, the only rider that has won Flanders. For nearly, a, for, nearly a, for nearly a decade, for it would have been. 10, yeah. 12 years, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> maybe you can count that more, but me and him, three, and then, then, then Stein de Volder. So, and we've been there, and yeah, that's maybe even more why probably we together are, are for these races, even more maybe, not named, but out there, because when you race, damn, it's even Roubaix, just me and Tom, always me and Tom, me and Tom. We were switching. Yeah, yeah we were switching. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you, and having watched those races and latterly commentated on them as well, did you ever during a race, speak. Was there any, any moments where there was any verbal... To each other? Yeah, to each other. I, I don't think... No, never just, just, just looking. Just, uh, I was looking, Tom. <laughs> I, was, I was a mirror. <laughs> yeah. Just a mask. <laughs> looking at himself. Yeah. yeah, it's Iron Man with his... Didn't see anything. No, but uh, you play with it a little bit as well. I mean, um, especially I, I, I was fast, so yeah. I always had to look bad in the final. Yeah. It was like... I'm like, oh, I can't pull anymore. So I always had to look bad because otherwise people wouldn't pull with me anymore. That it was would it, would it start attacking really early. So yeah, it's always playing games a little bit. It's not just riding bikes fast. It's always uh, the complete. Yeah, you have to play the cards right. And sticking with you, Tom, for a moment, how would you describe Fabian as a, as a, as a rider? What uh, if you had to if you had to describe him as best you could? Then I'm going to ask the same question to you. How would you describe him? What were his strengths? Where were his, maybe his weaknesses? How would you I think, summarize Fabian? Um, on a good day, Fabian and I, on, in a classic race, were probably equals. Yeah. Fabian had a fucking big shot. Like, he can go from far. And, 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 and he was talking about our team, but you had a good team as well. Like, before 2010, around 2010, our team was a little bit less. And so we were always fighting against Mati Preschel as well as... But him as a person, I think he was a guy like he had. Um, he took a little bit longer to get to the level he was winning classics, and then me, I was. I think we were thirty or thirty or not twenty nine when you won your first classic. So I was already. I won a few classics more, but when, once he reached that level, he was there until the end of his career, and um, he was uh, one of the guys we always had to take in our account of um, yeah, what would we would always do something in a race that would decide the race in yeah. one one way or another. Not because you decide a race, you win it, or you, you can also lose it, but it was always decided in a race. And Fabian, how would you describe Tom? <laughs> oh, he sprints, man. <laughs> when I remember many times when he went out of the saddle and then he went like a kind of a monster, like sprinting and, and so quick. And that was a hard one in a race to to really beat when we did several sprints together against each other, I had, I had no chance. This, because he was this, he had this something yeah. more. Because when we've been on top level, so he said, I had this shot and then I went, okay. But uh, when he went for the sprint or in those moments where he went, then it was hard to beat him. But then on the other hand, I think was trust or not trust? Because we also know when Tom, he, he can hold high speed. I mean, he won... Roubaix, like a long time trial. Yeah. So, but when you're in the in the morning on a race like that, you, you thought that you can do such a long way out there alone? Yeah, I was pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's hey. very very cool. Yeah. Hey. Look, I, I, was, did, I never needed to because I was fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you see. I had to go from far sometimes and no, said, okay, okay, I can wait. I think like <laughs> when, uh, yeah, you, you dropped me a few times also when I was at 50, 100 meters and I had that first, my first launch was always faster. Yeah. But he, when he got that first gap to close it back down, it was, oh, 
pain I felt sometimes chasing him down. So I think uh, we were very compatible as, as, as rivals. Yeah. Maybe we had some good fun on the bike. <laughs> and how about Tom? I mean, on, I mean, first human, feet on the ground. And, and what I have, where I saw, I mean, just, just normal, like, good guy to, to also have good talks in, in the times we had in the races. And where I have a huge respect for, and, and even more because he's from Belgium. And to what, what Tom won in the early years as a young athlete, I think wasn't so easy. Yeah. And to handle this, that, I mean, and you lift for many years in Belgium and, and to live in Belgium, I mean, you cannot even bring your kids in the morning to, sco to school. Today you can do that. Yeah, you enjoy it. But can you imagine you turn it back on all those years, especially in the before 2010, because you won Worlds, you won Flanders, Roubaix, and for me it took years to win Flanders the first time. It took me 2010, but you won so many races, and I saw with Tom what he has for a backpack with the country, with the people, and this, I can tell you, it's it's also not easy and yeah. to handle this in that country and the way he did it. I mean, he could have wings to fly around, but no, Tom on the end was Tom and feet on the ground. And to handle also that, I think not just what you win or how you won, but also how you handle everything around because same thing handling in Belgium, it's not easy. That's this, why it's a double chapeau to him. Yeah. I, a couple of years ago, I spoke to Mark Cavendish about, about you and, um, about your level of fame within Belgium. And I remember going to, one, I think, Brussels Airport, yeah. and coming off a plane, and there's a big cardboard cutout of Tom Bonin um, <laughs> uh, on the, in, in Brussels Airport. I think that you were there for quite a while. But he was saying that you were almost more famous than the King of Belgium. You know, one point yeah. there was... I mean, yeah. seriously, that's, like, that's the level. I mean, people... I mean, Belgium is... is Belgium only has 10,000 people living there. Yeah. <laughs> really small. <laughs> and they live all in Flanders. <laughs> no, but... Yeah, I was... Cycling is like, um, in, in certain periods, it is like a religion in Belgium. I mean, yeah. the, the period of, of the classics, even from Omloop with Nieuwsblad going on from there, it starts already. And so then it's the only, the Tour of Flanders is the day that everybody in Belgium watches Tour of Flanders or yeah. is there. So it's kind of, kind of big, but, uh, I never liked being famous off the bike. Okay. And uh, I always handled it pretty well, but I never liked it. Right. And, and, and Fabian, I think it's fair to say, given, given your results and the way that you raced in, in Roubaix and Flanders, although Roubaix is France, but essentially it's, it's Belgian as well, you know, it's the, it's the cobbles and three wins in Flanders. You were an honorary Flandrian. I think you were adopted by the Belgians. When you, when you used to win in the manner that you won, did you feel, although you got the Swiss national champions jersey on there, but then did you feel uh, a positive energy when you were there, the right, riding and, and winning Flanders like that? Because clearly it was a race that you was super motivated for. Did you feel almost a little bit of Belgian in, in, in your blood? Yeah, I think it came all by the years. I think um, it took me like, like Tom already mentioned, 2010, I won Harlebeck. Yeah. It was my first Belgian race. The real, a real race in Belgium, not the time trial or a prologue, whatever, just something on the road. And then from there on, my, my journey has continuing with, with Flanders, Roubaix and, and other, I mean, Harbeck as well. And, and, and I think from there on, maybe, I don't know if it was that people has changed their mind or just they see now, wow, there's someone else or another one. And on the end, I mean, I raced how I raced. I, I am how, how I am. And, and I also try to transmit that I'm not different. I'm like everyone else. I'm a, I'm a bike rider, I'm a human. And I also bring my daughter because then they that interviews and this and they ask me about life and said, Yeah, I, I bring my daughter also to school, I go to the bakery. What? You can go to the bakery in Switzerland? Yeah. Of course I can go to the bakery, of course I can go to the butcher. But in Belgium, no I think it's not possible. Yeah. And and but this was for me important to transmit that everyone deserves I mean, we are not rock stars, but we've been looked as Kind of rock I think star. you were perceived as almost uh, that, that when you were in those years when you were both winning all the big races you were within the cycling community and, and beyond, especially in Belgium, there was a perception that you were. You were on this elevated status. You, you clearly were. Yeah, but I can tell you first was you went out with your uh, cycling gears. No one recognized you. Then they start to recognize on the bike. And then you went for a walk in the town with your 
with your cy uh, cycling trainers, just the team clothing, they start to recognize you. And then you went with normal clothing, then they start to recognize you, and then it was over to go out on the hotel to have a walk, because you get people around you, photos and pictures and this, and then it became hard yeah. to also walk around to live, because when you go out on a hotel or, or just wherever you are, you want also to get air. And this is the price you pay. <laughs> also, on the other hand, when in a country where, you, where, 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 where Trump said, I mean, in Flanders, the country stands still. And everyone knows this race. And when you hit this race, then the next day, the evening, it's just this one name. If he wins or another wins, it's just the person that the whole country has a, yeah, has a remark on it. And then airport, not airport, wherever you go, life changes from that. And on the end, it's our supporters. I mean, I remember in 2010, they've been, I don't say shouting, but of course, more Tom, because it's how it is. And, and, and it's also not bad, because on the end, it's not me, it's the supporters on the road. And then from there on, more Swiss flags, more people around and this. But I think that's just sport, I think. Um, yeah. but Tom, what was... What do you think was your hardest, hardest battle with Fabian? Because there's a couple of times you finished on the podium together, first and second, and then the reverse in Roubaix. And what, 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 was, the, what was the hardest battle from memory? When, when did you... The hardest one? Yeah. That was, uh, the, the hardest one I remember, like pain-wise, we were sprinting together in Harlebeke. Yes. And um, I, I, I missed a bottle on top of Trier or something. It was the last climb, and I, I was out of... Ring and I missed the last bottle I could grab my hands to, and that's like 30 k's more going into Harlebeek. And I started to cramp up, and I started sprinting before me, so I had to yeah, take a half bike or a bike back on him. And I just managed to pass him, and I crossed the finish line, and I would get my hands up, but my fingers were cramped on my handlebars. <laughs> so I, they were like, I couldn't move my hands anymore because I was so cramped up. And uh, yeah, that's been. There's been so many times that we raced together for uh, for a win. So, but that's the thing I remember. Like they had to pull my hands open off the handlebars, get me off the bike, and then it started to relax a little bit. But it was unbelievable. Because between you, is it four or five Harold? You've won three Harold, three Harold Beckers, four, five, five. five. five you are you're five. You're five. Five you're and three times second. <laughs> right. And and Harold Beckers. And he's been through so many names, isn't it? The E three Harold Becker. I mean, over the years, but. And obviously, it comes an important point. So was that clearly for you, both of you, and both of you have won that race and gone on to win Flanders and Roubaix because you've done like the double-double, the triple-triple. Double, double. It's, a, it's a very... Im that's the best race in the world. It's uh, clearly... A I love... No, Roubaix for me is, 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 the, is, is Valhalla. Yep. But uh, Harald Bacon is the most fun race I think there is to race. It's 210 Ks. It's not the last hour of, of Flanders. But the final is so much fun. It's like a BMX that's cool, you know. We have <laughs> like it's le left, all, right. All left the climbs right. are there in 60 k's, and just going up and down, up and down. It's like. And I guess is there a little bit less pressure in Harold Becker as well? It's not. Uh, it's it's more it's, intense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. More intense because the last 25 k's on big. And roads. then it's flat again, so there's always possibility of people coming back, but in the end they never come back. It's like a 10 five second gap always in the end. It's a fun race to ride. So, can okay, you describe that race as BMX race, and we know. Race knowledge in Flanders and Roubaix is massively important, but and technical ability is good. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to play you off each other here. So, Fabian, who is the better bike handler? <laughs> He's, uh, that was, no, I, I, think I actually felt frightened, and that look he just I gave crashed. me. I just, look, I, I, okay, I, wait. I, I mean, who? He, no, it, no, look, look, wait. I crashed out <laughs> in Flanders because a rolling bottle came you. back, so crashed out. Yeah. Then you might remember 2016 <laughs> crashed out again on Flanders, and even in the in the in the velodrome I crashed out. So looks I'm not a good bike handler. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, if you if you haven't if you haven't crashed in Flanders, you're not a bike rider. You got to push it. Yeah. No, I, I crashed also. I crashed one time because they were making a, a rainbow. So the fire department of Kortrijk was spraying water in the air to, <laughs> to, to create a rainbow. And we're coming into the city, you know, at 60 k's an hour, all these narrow streets. And the guys in front, they see this shower of water, so they started breaking. So it's cheap. Everybody on the floor managed to, uh, I don't know, break a little something in my wrist. But I got to the finish line. 
and then I crashed one time hitting a pole again like at 60 k's an hour the peloton was going left to right left to right and in the last moment boom against 213 the pole. yeah you, you crash sometimes well, if you do it if you do it 16 times or yeah. 17 times you crash sometimes so. yeah but he did an amazing Roubaix with Tenkip but he was postal time where yeah, that was a, that was a technical yeah that's this why is, this is like 2005 no, no, four, no two, four, three. Four, three. Oh, when, three. You, when you were 22 or something yes. wasn't it you were 20, first Rube right? just <laughs> is it your debut pro is that was my first year yeah, that when was, you wrote, that was did a, you write for postal then you went to quick step I did one year postal I had two-year yeah. contract and then after one year yeah I did I did the classics and I was a super motivated kid and then the Tour de France with Armstrong happened I wasn't there but the, the season just stopped for us. Sure. We, we had to go to races like Merixem and, and small races in Belgium with mixed teams to get kilometers in my legs for the world championship. And I was in Zolder that year. Yep. So I did my first professional world championship in my own country and I had to prepare myself with uh, C and D races. And wow. then, uh, yeah, with just one, one thing with another. And then Patrick came with Quick Step and yeah, said, I need to be there from the start. So. That's a different story. Yeah, that's, another, that, that's maybe for, for another night. But Because uh, I was in the Mapai, in the team Mapai. That was a, that was a and hard then, then I did some stage. I mean, I did... But you, uh, did, you did 2002 Rube as well, eh? No, no, no. No, no you no. weren't there? No, I did in... I became... We, you fourth in 2003? No, my... 2004? No, no, no. 2004? Oh, you were fourth, weren't you? With yeah. Fasso Bortolo. Wait, uh, 2000... Yeah. No, 2005, fourth. 2004, the first time. But I crashed. Yeah. I don't crashed out in Roubaix, but I stopped at the feed zone after 200k. Okay. That was my first Roubaix experience on a sunny, crazy, hot day. I think Van Pete game one? Probably. Yeah. Four was Van Pete. No, four was uh, Baxter. No, three. In three. Three was Van Pete. <laughs> Sorry, hey. Hey, we're getting old, hey. I remember everything. There are many years. <laughs> so. Over your respective careers, I mean, I think, do you know how many, I mean, I know how many wins you had, but how many, do you know how many wins you had? In, in general? In all. Oh, I, I've heard so many. I think in general, if you count everything with Kermis, I won like 151. That's what they told me. Okay. And then UCI won. 121. 121. Yeah. And 88, Fabian. You know that? Yeah. Why? I did my research. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one little bit of research I, I did. I thought it's less. So I totally teed it up for myself. I thought it was uh, less. Just to show a bit, of, you know, because I've, <laughs> you know, because uh, it's, I mean, but you, there was, you both got these different careers, and that was really interesting what you said at the, at the, the start, Tom, is this, you come here, we're talking about the classics, but there was, and you've had both very, very long successful careers, but a lot of the time, you were doing other races. I mean, the classics forms a very, very small percentage of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, but did. there's the other, there's, yeah. and, and, and there's, there's the tours, you know, there's, there's the, the smaller stage race, the Tour of Belgium. There's so many races where you're together where you maybe weren't top billing, but that is ultimately an, an enormously important part, that, that fabric, that sense of community. And actually, what was it like then? Because, and I think it's fair to say, Fab, if you don't mind, when you were in your pomp at the tour, at that sort of time, you were maybe the last patron. Of the peloton, you know, p p perhaps it doesn't. There's no real patron anymore. And you look before that to the 1980s, Bernardino, I think, was the best example. But I think in the modern era that's just passed, you were maybe a patron. What, what were you aware of that, or was, was that something because you, you you carried yourself with a certain confidence based on on, on your ability? But um, but that is very. But the sport is very different now. Do you think you you guys maybe with the last era where there was a clear hierarchy of, of riders? Do you think? Boss, that first. Hmm. I think important is that when the things happen, that that you stand also in the front for not just for yourself because it's not an ego thing. It's for your sport. Yeah. But I think on the end um, there are certain limits, and when they are coming, you need to protect your sport. And and it was not oh, okay. I do it because I get a favor out of it. If I stand once in 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 Oman for the for the riders, or even in Italy somewhere when it came, or or once at the tour. I mean, my nature not, but I think it was necessary to do, to, to, to also to help, because there is no big rider union that really stands together, because there are always conflicts and so on, but, but if you see today, there's even less that someone stands in the front. Sometimes it's when they stand, then they are scared that something happened. But to protect your sport, I mean, you protect the riders, safety or issues, um, it's not an easy one, but on the end, 
when things came like I did, it came because I felt it is right to do. Someone was happy, someone not. I mean, yeah. It, it's always difficult. You race in Italy and then something happened, then the, the, the non Italians said, We do it, and then the Italians say, No, non facciamo. Or you go to France. I mean, in France it's the same. French is, No, 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 on fait pas ça. But the rest said, We do it. So you see. Uh, it's 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 never easy because there's so much conflict. Then you have the team. The team, you need to race. You can't do this. You can't do that. Um, there have been occasions where we don't race. I remember, um, and when I could do something, I did it. Um, but alone, you can't do it. Yeah, possible. And what, what about what? What do you feel now about the, looking at the? Do, do you watch a lot of racing still? Uh, you're still involved with classified. Yeah, yeah, no, you no, still no, clearly. Yeah. I know you do your motorsports as well, which yeah. you clearly love, and you did that. No, I, I like. I like. Uh, no, I need. I need some sort of competition in my life. I yeah. Don't, I don't need to have a competition in my life every weekend or every week, but um, I get more happy when I have some form of competition in my life. So, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling okay right now, and with classified, we'll try. Yeah, we'll, I think we'll end up in the pro peloton as well, but it's not. It's not a big objective to get there sure. or anything. But uh, yeah, coming back to safety and all those things, I mean, I think also in general people have just changed. You know, the, the, the younger generations which we saw, they're less interested in, in, in what their, their, co, um, their followers next to them are doing. It's just insane how these things have changed. I think the generation before us, they really still had the idea that we were in this together and sure. help each other. And yeah, we're on this big circus and if you win today, you can win tomorrow. And doesn't really matter because we get paid in the end of the month. I think we were the in-between generation where we still had people trying to take care of one, another, one each other. And, but in the end, you know, there's so many uh, conflicts going on of organizers and riders and teams. And like in the end, we just give up. And then you say, okay, it was in San Remo that edition when it started snowing. When yeah. it, no, it yeah. started when it was snowing from the start. Yeah. And then we anal uh, they're going to cancel the race, we analyzed the race, and then everybody was in the bus dying. There were fucking people dying almost. Like, it was unbelievable. It was the worst thing I ever saw. And then they gave us the news in 30 minutes after this, we're going to take the buses down and start the race again. So I took my decision. I said, I'm not starting again. And then the entire team followed. And I think eventually only Mark started, Mark Cavendish, because, because they took the hills out. <laughs> <laughs> and, I don't, hold on, just and, check. Is Mark here? No, that's, he's not. That's, no. That's, that's what bike riders are. They're like, no, no, we're never going to start again. We're never going to start. It's, it's, a, it's a disgrace. And they're like, yeah, we're taking out the Cipressa and the Poggio. Huh. Ah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can win my second Sanremo here. And then there goes all, all the trouble. So in the end, you have to make the decisions for yourself. But uh, I think that was the last time cycling had a chance to stood up for itself. And they did it till they left it. I mean... Seven, you've got seven monuments each, obviously four, Fla four, four Roubaix, three Flanders, three Flanders, three Roubaix, Anna Milan, San Remo. Do you, was there a race, I mean, you're world road champion and the rest, I mean, it's ridiculous. It would take, it'd take me all night to list your, both of your, your wins, but was there a race that you, is there any bitterness or is there any regret in your career about a race that you would have loved to have won, for example? Or you, do you look back on your career with a real sense of satisfaction? Or do, do you still think, ah, oh, what have that? Uh, you still pick apart a race and think, damn, you know? I have one race. What was that? Race, and I was, nobody going to remember this. I was in the final with uh, Gilbert and I don't remember, remember the guy's name in Paris Tour, 2010 or something. And I had a bet at the beginning of my career with uh, Kevin Olsmans, my, uh, my trainer and my, my guy I trained with and he was always in the room with me. And for some reason, he said, you're going to win all the classics except Paris Tours. But it was like a joke between us. Okay. And suddenly, I was in a situation, and I was I attacked on the last climb, and Gilbert was there. And it's like nine I Ks to go, isn't I, it? Something. I, yeah, I yeah. can't remember the guy's name, but he beat me in the Vuelta in a sprint, so I was aware of him. And we're going into the last K, and he was pulling, and I was second. And, of course, Gilbert is smarter than me. <laughs> he, let, he drops a gobble. And I was concentrating on the guy in front of me, so he passes me like 20 Ks an hour faster from the back. And I had to start sprinting, and I came like 15 centimeters at the finish line. And I lost Paris Tours, and um, because of the bet we had, me and Osman, that was probably one of the things I still remember of feeling <laughs> very, very bad. I crashed my helmet and everything after, that. <laughs> and nobody, nobody remembers. So it wasn't that? Well, we do now because you yeah, told him. Now, now, now oh, it's, it's going to be a big yeah. thing again. We're going to find out the name of the third rider. 
Who was there a financial bet? Was there any money? Was it just no, no, you no. just said I bet you're going to win it? That was it. That was okay. It. What, what about you, Fabian? Because you, you got that Milan San Remo, three monuments. Was there a race that you think you could have won? Do you have any regrets? Because again, remarkably decorated. Is there a race that you're like, damn? I mean, Sean Kelly's is is the Chambry, Chambry, and he never won Flanders. They're the two that he is like pr ha really has an issue with those races. That, um, and he's it's, it's happy to talk about them. Actually, he's not. He hates talking about them because they were... He still hates it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he doesn't know where the medal is for, for Chambry because he just got it wrong when Le Monde won in 89. Um, but is there a race for you that you think that when you sleep at night, you know, when yeah, you put your little, many you put your little hat on? I think, do you have a little hat in bed and pajamas? Or yeah. You, yeah. And just it's, like... It's easy. It's Pay Basque, Amstel, Flesh, Lier. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dauphiné, wait, wait, <laughs> Dauphiné, uh, what do we have, Lombardy, oh, uh, races. our record, oh, it's a lot of races, uh, no, I'm oh, yeah. kidding, no, listen, I'm more than, I'm more than happy, I'm, I'm proud, I'm, I'm in excited, I mean, I won in this, I was good at, yeah. of course, I said, yeah, you could train differently for this and that race, yes, I could, but, no, I was, this was my domain, this was, yeah in what I was good at and I'm proud and super happy and, and nice to look back and yeah, sit here with Tom talking about our past and, and he made me also better being a better bike rider. So we have been sharing many years together and we have been in, in this what we loved, uh, those cobble races uh, where we battled and the rest was, yeah, hilly races at the time was Amstel Flesh Liege was for hilly riders. Yeah. Uh, today is a bit different. Today is a Tour de France rider coming to oh. Flanders, and then uh, in Liege yeah. maybe there is That's a sprint thing. going. So you see, cycling has changed. But in these years we have been races. Uh, in the years we have been uh, being riders, we have won in what we have been good at, and and that's fine. And I'm I'm more than happy with that. Well, we've been told it's we've got like a minute to go now, so I'm just wondering who I should leave the last word with, really. Um, should it be Tom? Should it be Fabian? Maybe you could say it together. So we just say thanks to everybody for coming tonight because just leave it on an equal footing because you, I think, well, what's, I just, <laughs> do you have to, do you have to have a last word in conversation sometimes? No, do you no, like that? I seem quite I'm calm. Fabian, are you like, most you like easy going guy there is probably. You are very easy. Not guy. in this room. Eh? No, 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 okay. Um, Fabian, do you want to say the last word or shall I say the last word? I can do that. You could go on then. First of all, be healthy, be happy, ride your bike because riding the bike is something special. Big applause, Mr. Stevens. No, no, no. No. Hey. It's a no, no. No. Was it good? It was good. Yeah, right. I mean, thanks. We are cycling lovers, right? We, it, I can't, that was 40 minutes. That went, like, like, it went as quick as you guys when in your prime, um, ridiculously quick, but um, it's been a pleasure to have you both on, on stage talking so openly, so candidly, um, and looking back on careers that have meant so much to people. I mean, look at the crowd here, look at the amount of smiling faces. You know, you, you've, you've changed people's lives, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a small way, in a, but in a significant way, and, and thanks very much, and I wish you all the best for the future, so thanks very much. Tom Bonin, Fabian, thanks, Laura. Thank